Bandai from Japan has recently announced some big updates which will greatly change the way of how we play the Digimon card game. I'm also super excited to announce a new feature on my channel where I launched my very first ever YouTube membership called the Evolt Club. By joining, you will have access to exclusive perks and contents that regular viewers don't have. Perks include the Evolt Club membership badge, and the best part is that you'll be able to see members-only community posts featuring my first draft deck profiles even before the video comes out. You will see more updates by me for every deck profile release and even updated deck lists and adjustments with all the lists. Your comments and questions will also have priority replies from me. So what are you guys waiting for? Click on the join button right now. Thank you all so much for the support and I look forward to engaging with you guys. Digimon fans, welcome back and we got a really surprising news discussion video today. This is going to be super cool, super exciting. I just woke up and I just can't believe what I just heard and saw. But basically what happened was the Digimon card game officially from Japan and Bandai recently announced some really big key changes to the card game. I'm going to leave a link in the Twitter page to you guys so you can read it, but it's all in Japanese. So I'm going to help you guys sort of like uh, translate it and go through it because uh, translations did come out already, but we're just going to go through everything all in one go. And yeah, as you guys can see, see here, you can watch the video. There's a lot of stuff. Just scroll down in the Twitter and there's a bunch of stuff that they're talking about. And this is going to be really huge uh, news because these changes are not just small, they're really big for the Digimon card game. But first and foremost, like always, if you guys want to see more discussion videos and news updates like these, be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe, stay tuned for more, turn on that notification bell, and I really, really greatly appreciate it. But let's just go right into it. The first rule is going to be mulligans. Um, to give you guys a very quick idea of how the mulligans is going to work it's going to work exactly the same as one piece if you guys have played one piece before but here are just basically the basic procedures which we'll get to talk about first you shuffle your deck and your digitama deck you decide who goes first by rolling your die and as per usual and then you draw your cards uh opening hand with five cards now keep in mind very important here you do not set your security first so that's exactly the same as one piece at the moment you draw your five cards and then you optionally decide if you want the mulligan or not. If you do decide to mulligan, you return all the five cards to your deck and you shuffle them and then you redraw your entire new hand with five cards. Now if you choose not to mulligan, then you just basically skip this step and then afterwards you place your five security and then the game starts. Um, my first opinions and thoughts on this is uh, very interesting. I don't really mind how mulligans work. I know many of us have been uh, thinking that mulligans is a great thing. The fact that we're playing an ultimate cup, um, having mulligans seems to be very nice. It seems to balance the game a little bit and you know give people a second opportunity because bricking is tilting, right? <laughs> but so I understand. I definitely, um, yeah, I personally don't have a huge preference when it comes to having a mulligan or not. My most important point is consistency rules across the entire game. I personally didn't really like how ultimate cup had it regionals didn't have it nationals didn't have it and then suddenly ultimate cup had it and then locals decides to have it sometimes and i just didn't like the consistency for me is as long as it's consistent across the board i'm okay with it but this is a huge discussion and a huge difference because in the Dig in the digimon card game for japan always they play in best of ones and then i'm not sure but um maybe some of you guys who do play in japan can correct me i think sometimes in top cut then they switch into best of threes afterwards or something I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that's what I heard from some of my friends, but you guys can sort of like confirm or whatnot. But that means is if we're getting mulligans and we're getting treated this format in this way, would it mean that it will translate to us in the English version or not? That's going to be really important because my personal opinion, once again, consistency is really important across the board. If Japan's playing like a type, type, completely type of style of the game, and then we're playing a completely different type of style, it doesn't make any sense usually. But of course, you have to sort of tailor and sort of change your rules sometimes a little bit depending on sort of the market and the people in the community and what they are like. But I think it's just really important to keep it a consistency across the board because if you argue, right, we're, we're playing nationals, we're playing regionals, and eventually we're going to be playing like world championships and stuff like that, 
you know, it makes sense to have all these rules to sort of be consistent across the board. That's just my own big opinion on this part. I'm honestly, again, not like a huge um, saying that mulligan is great. I'm not against mulligans either. I don't really mind at the end of the day, um, whatever, as long as it's consistent. But this is the big, huge rule change first. Moving on to next, we've got some really exciting, exciting news. In May 26, 2023, which is basically in two months for Japan, the brand new starter decks are going to be out. The War Greymon starter deck in black and as well as the Metal Gurumon starter deck in purple are coming out. This is really cool and really interesting. Um, I know War Greymon and Metal Greymon always gets a lot of love and support. Um, I feel a little bit otherwise, but that's okay. But we got some really cool new cards that are going to change the game. And this is a big one, guys. So a quick talk about is apparently we're getting some counter cards or hand counter cards, also known as hand traps, uh, being brought into the game. So first discussion is very, very interesting. But let's take a look on sort of what these hand cards and hand counter cards are going to be like. Um, let's quickly talk about the procedures too. Very, very simple. It's almost like block the blocker phase before, you know, player A declares attack declaration and then player A activates all its win attacking effects, resolves all their effects and basically very simple procedure as per usual. And then this is when you choose to have a counter timing, which is triggered by player B of when the Digimon attacks and you can play cards to counter very similar to One Piece, but also very different because the counter cards do different things other than just buffing up DP or, or so on. And then player B's counter attack once per attack, once per attack resolves as well. And then players B blocker phase then activates if they choose one to block or not. So basically the idea is you act, player A activates all their effects and then player B activates all their effects along with counter cards and then the procedure is then you choose to block or, or not like the normal game. And then the battle commences and then either Digimon or security battle happens. So let's see what these cards really are. Uh, really exciting stuff to take a look at. The first one here is the War Greymon itself from the starter deck and we have these new cards called Ace cards which is very interesting. So these are samples. Um, this is a six cost mega, which is very interesting. Um, keep in mind guys, I'm still a little bit confused on how some of these work. So if you guys can help me out by commenting down below and let me know uh, as I go through, it'll be really helpful, but, uh, we'll try to dissect this as much as we can. Six cost mega. That's already like a very interesting thing because megas usually cost 11, 12 and 13 and 15 and so on, right? They're going to be expensive to play, but this is a cheap War Greymon that can hard slam for 6. That's very memory efficient. Otherwise, you Digivolve on top of level 5 for 3 cost. That's black. Okay, now let's go for all these different effects. There's a lot of new keywords to dissect. The first one is the usual black text. Is that you can Digivolve on top of a level 5 Greymon in its name for 3 cost. So it means it kind of forbid, uh, forgoes a bit of the color requirements with this black text, which is really good. Next one is Hand. Counter. Blast Evolution. Now I I guess this is like three keywords in one, but it explains altogether what it does. It means your Digimon may Digivolve into this card without paying the cost. Now I'm kind of curious what that means. So <clears throat> does that mean you get to Digivolve during your opponent's turn? I, I, I think that's what it means. Um, that would make sense for what it means as being a hand counter and you get to Digivolve it from your hand um, without paying the, the cost. That's crazy. So that means your Metal Greymon, the level 5 sitting on the board, can just suddenly Digivolve into a level 6 for free. Of course, there is some drawbacks, um, I think, that we have, which we'll get more into it. But also, this War Greymon right here has Blocker. As per usual, Blocker, you get to block. It has a All Turns effect. Once we turn, when a card is removed from a security stack, you get to unsuspend this Digimon. Now, that's crazy. This guy can block multiple times, essentially and do some crazy things and basically kind of stop your opponent's attacks and stop your opponent's plays a little bit when they choose to attack. Now the last part is this ace name or an ace mechanic. You guys can see that there's War Greymon and then behind it says ace. I don't know what that means in terms of like naming and wording particularly. Does it still count as a War Greymon itself or is it counted as a War Greymon ace specific name card? So next, talking about what this ace effect means, it says overflow minus four. So when this card is sent from the battle area or under any of your card to any other places, 
you lose four memory. So it's kind of like an inheritable, I think, even. So when this card is sent from the battle area or under your card to other places, lose four memory. So if it gets trashed, if it gets bounced or whatever, I think this even applies, yeah, as a inheritable or even just a general effect. I'm not entirely sure because the fact that it's right on top of the inheritable effects box. I'm going to need you guys to help me out to dissect this as well. Let me know in the comments what that exactly means. But basically, if this card is gone, you get a drawback and you lose four memory, giving your opponent more memory to work with for the turn, which is a huge um, balancing when it comes to sort of playing this card, which is very, very interesting. But that's it just for Wargreymon. Let's move into the next cards. There's a couple of other cards that showcase. We got Metal Gurumon here, another six cost. Really nice artwork. I like to see like the black or the dark version of Metal Guru in the back. Six cost to hard play, three to digivolve until level five purple. But otherwise, with its first black text effect, you can digivolve for three on top of a Guru Mon in name that's level five for three cost. And then same hand counter blast evolution. Um, being able to digivolve for free. So he has a different effect. He doesn't have locker. This is when digivolving, you trash up to three cards from your hand, and you gain one memory for every card trashed. I kind of like this effect because hand advantage is um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, you scale up to really large hands with Digimon in generally, and being able to access and use your hand as a resource in the later times of the game, and you have a lot of dead cards that you don't need to play usually, right? Because you're just trying to build your line and stuff in the later stages of the game when you have a lot of cards in your hand. Being able to use that and trash some cards for this specific effect is kind of nice. I like it because, um, yeah, usually sometimes as a blue player, uh, mainly, I, I just hold like a thick stack of card in my hand and just like, okay, I don't know what to do with this, right? It gives me a lot of options for different plays, but now I can use them as resources as well, which is very, very nice. Uh, but that's blue for specifically. But, you know, some decks also just draw a lot and then you just have a thick deck in your hand and then yeah anyways you guys get my point uh so it has when attacking once per turn by trashing one card from your hand you get to delete one of your opponent's digimon with the lowest level so that's interesting because that has nothing to do with like countering during your opponent's turn i think this is just its general normal effect uh otherwise it has the ace thing once again ace overflow exact same effect if this card is just removed somehow somewhere you lose four memory essentially giving your opponent more memory back so very, very interesting. The main counterpart is the gaining memory. If you can gain memory enough, you can pass your opponent's turn. So passing your opponent's turn is really great. Uh, I think it's pretty insane too. You just, you know, end your opponent's turn outright right there. Uh, and your opponent has to be more wary, but you also have to be as wary as well now because, you know, once you have this card in board, as long as it's gone and it's removed, there's a huge trade back for sure. Anyways. Moving into the next cards right here, we can see there's Magna Angemon, there's also Lilymon, so let's talk about them right here. These are also hand counter cards. You guys can see there's a slightly new border design for, for some of these cards, and maybe this is the new hand counter border that they're going to be uh, unified usingly across. So we have Magna Angemon Ace, uh, hand counter, Blast Digivolution once again. You may digivolve this Digimon uh, without paying its cost uh so it digivolves on top of level four i believe kind of blurry but a yellow four for for three costs normally but otherwise you use it as a hand counter card it doesn't have a black text this time so on play or when digivolving if you have five or fewer security cards you get to recover one then your opponent's digimon gets minus 1000 dp for every card in your security stack for the turn uh yeah one of your opponent's digimon so that's, again, really interesting counter, very similar to just the typical yellow mechanics that they do, but you can now play these cards during your opponent's turn. Ace Overflow, minus three, not minus four this time. So because it is like an ultimate, so I guess there's lesser drawback to it. It has a slightly um, <clears throat> not so strong effect compared to like the, the level sixes, which we saw earlier. So of course, if he gets removed, you minus three memory. And then we have Lilymon Ace, hand counter blast once again. Um, you may digivolve it on top of uh, into this card for free on play or when digivolving also keep in mind they're only on play for costs which is really really cheap i'm just very curious that if you can actually choose to hard play this during your opponent's turn instead of digivolving or do you have to digivolve that's the only thing i'm not sure of <clears throat> 
But yeah, I guess we'll find out as we sort of like get more news. Once again, this, these news are very new. There's a lot of discussions going on, so we're going to find out as we go. Anyways, for Lilymon, once again, you get to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon on play or when Digivolving. Then you get to return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon with 5,000 DP or less to the bottom of their deck. Really cool. And then it has Ace Overflow, minus 3. Next, we have Metal Greymon and Zudomon. Uh, Metal Greymon this time has a black text right here. I think is this uh, this artwork covered up the play cost? Uh, maybe it's you know maybe it's still in prototype right now, or maybe it was just a special effect uh, of that screenshot at that moment. But anyways, uh, let's see. Metal Greymon gets the Digivolve on top of the level four with Greymon its name for three cost instead, so you can go on top of a black one, even though this card is red. Uh, hand counter blast once again on play when digivolving delete one of your opponent's digimon with 6,000 dp or less very simple and an ace overflow minus three zudomon right here um no black text but also hand counter blast evolution on play when digivolving trash two cards from under your opponent's digimon then return one of your opponent's digimon with no sources back to their hand and then ace overflow minus three Okay, so these are the few, all the hand traps that got reviewed today so far that we get to see. I'm very sure we're going to be seeing more. That, you know, there still needs to be one for black as well, uh, which we have not get to see yet. So I think every, you know, deck and cards is going to start having these moving forward. Uh, these are going to be like the new mechanic, new main key cards of the game, um, which is going to be really, really interesting. Next, we have a new Taikimiya, really blurry image right here, but um, it's a memory tamer, just so you guys know, but it also has an all turns effect, is when a attack target is switched by suspending this tamer, draw one, and one of your Digimon gains 2000 DP for that turn. This is really interesting because it's like a memory tamer that synergizes specifically with those hand counter cards, essentially. Uh, you can already imagine this combo is supposed to combo with the War Greymon. You Digivolve into that War Greymon during the counter phase, and then if your opponent attacks, you choose to block with that War Greymon and whatnot. You can suspend this tie to give that Digimon extra buffs for that specific battle and for the turn, which is going to be really, really interesting. Of course, security always, you just, just get to play this tamer for free. Next, we have Matt, which is also a tamer. Uh, memory Tamer, Purple, and also All Turns Effect when a card is trashed in your hand. With your own effects, by suspending this tame, you get to gain a memory. So comboing with the Metal Guru mount, which we saw, because you trash cards to gain memory of that, and you get to gain more memory with, with this mat, and then potentially really just like cripple your opponent's turn, which is, again, really interesting synergy. Then we have these new Digi Eggs, Digitamas. Really interesting that you can see that they've uh, added the egg now on the cost uh, as like a new design. We have Coromon. This one is uh, with its inheritable effects only, simply. All turns once a turn, when a attack target is switched, basically if you were blocking, uh, this Digimon gets an extra 1000 DP for the turn. I think this also applies to Raid, so very, very interesting too. Um, so yeah, more DP buffs, more buffs for your counters during the opponent's turn. And then we have Sunomon right here. Uh, it's very simple. In a, uh, when attacking once a turn, if a 6 or less cards in your hand you get to draw one so that's it for this egg there but yes that basically wraps up for all these new cards and huge discussions going on definitely a longer video but if you guys enjoy seeing my reaction and sort of talking about these let me know in this comment section down below and yeah super super interesting and super cool um my opinion on hand traps you guys might be asking already uh, it's a very interesting take. I can't say for sure if it's a great one or a bad one. I know the community is definitely very split at the moment. Some people don't like hand traps. The game is just great the way it is. Uh, but also, you know, we, we got to acknowledge that the game has gone to a stage at this moment where, you know, it's really your turn or my turn. The only interaction there is are blockers and securities. So, you know, giving your opponents a chance to sort of prevent like OTKs and big plays from happening with these counters, I can see the pros on t in terms of that. Um, you now have to second guess a little bit and you have to think a little bit. Your opponent can surprise you at any time when you're going for your big turn plays as well and sort of see how you want to commit. And it, I, think, I think it definitely slows down the game pace a little bit because of these counters, which again is going to be up for debate whether if we should be playing best of ones or best of threes. I personally just tiny bit prefer best of threes just because it gives you a little bit of a, a bit of a comeback potential. But with these new mechanics incorporated, 
you know, this gives you that comeback potential anyways. So maybe I'm okay with best of ones. But once again, my biggest priority and biggest opinion is as long as it's consistent across the board uh, throughout the Japanese and the English version. That's what I personally really hope for. But yeah, really cool stuff. Really, really cool news today. So that's it for today's news video. That will wrap up for our discussion video for today. What do you guys think about these new rule updates and cards? Will the mulligan rule transfer over here for us in the English version? And will there be best of ones from now on instead of best of threes? What will make most sense? How about all these new hand counter cards? What do you guys think about them? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this discussion video, be sure to give it a like. If you guys want to see more discussion videos and updated news videos like these, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. As always, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. This is Vault, signing out.